Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Alex. And you know what? We're going back in time, aren't we? Yes, we're revisiting a video that we did uh, going on about four years ago. Four years ago. Which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, we're going to teach you how to fly a drone today. So if you got a drone and you don't know how to fly it, this is the video for you. Now, so much has changed in the past four years. If you look back at our original video, we were flying a tricopter that was yes. rather large. And, uh, you know, science hadn't really caught up with the desire to fly a drone. Yes, and at the time we thought that tricopter flew fantastic. We but did. if you go back and watch that video, it's like, yeah. like all over the place. Yeah. So we got new quads with arrows. We'll explain that momentarily. Yeah. But we have a couple different key items that are going to help you find success flying your first drone. Now, everyone's a little bit different here. And there's basically three different journeys you can take into getting to fly a drone. Now, one thing, we're going to take like the DJI Mavics and the Phantoms. We're going to put them in a box. We're really talking about getting in a path for RC drones, drone racing, flying quads, things like that. Yes. And when it comes to quadcopters in general, there's typically three big learning curves yeah. that you're going to have to overcome to have success. Yeah. Um, and each one of those have unique challenges. And the three learning curves are, first you got to learn how to build a quad. Mm -hmm. then, then you got to learn how to tune it. Yep. And then after you got it built and tuned well, then you can learn how to fly it. Now the nice thing with where the industry is and with the technology that's out today is there's tons and tons and tons of ready to fly quads yeah. like this little Vortex 150, flight test edition. Right Ding. there. But the nice thing about ready to fly quads is it takes uh, two of the three of those learning curves out. So it's already built and it's already tuned. So right out of the box, it flies really, really well. And that's why uh, we recommend ready to fly quads as a great first drone to learn how to. And you can use anything from as small as like a toy grade quad that yeah. you can get. It's gonna teach you the same basic muscle memory as something like a high performance race quad. You yeah, know? A lot of people think they have to jump to the tip of the spear and you really don't have to do that. As a matter of fact, if you're a person that doesn't have a lot of air or you wanna practice in your own home, the new little tiny FPV inductrixes, or what we really love, the tiny whoops, yes. are a great thing. It's out of the box experience, everything's tuned wonderfully. You can fly in your living room, learn all the basic principles you need. Now, if you really want to stack all three experiences and still have a nice tiny durable quad, the Gremlin is a really good option for you. That's great because you can learn how to build, you can learn how to fly, the assembly process is fun, and plus, your imagination is your own limitation. Yes. The size isn't necessarily a representation of how advanced a quad is because yeah. the little tiny whoops, they all are using the same basic fundamentals of flight as a huge quad, you yeah. know, our giant mini quad or anything like that. So, you know, micro tiny whoops versus a, a Gremlin versus a 150 versus a 250 versus a 400 size quad, they're all the same when they're in the air. Um, and you can tune them to give desired performance, but the general idea of your muscle memory is gonna remain the same across all the different sizes. And one thing we're gonna really focus on is this little Vortex 150. Yes. One reason is, is because you have two different unique experiences. Everything is tuned wonderfully. You have things like on-screen display when you're flying FPV later on. Yes. Also, it's very general. If you start off with a three cell battery, it's gonna be a very docile, general experience. You're still gonna be able to do all the great flight experiences you have. Plus, you get a pretty decent flight time out of it. Yes. Later, when you're more comfortable, you can jump to a four cell. Now you're flying similar to the guys with the five inch race quad setups. Mm -hmm. May not be quite as fast, but I promise you, it's gonna be a very rewarding experience. And speaking of FPV, yeah. even if your quad, like our little Vortex 150s, they come out of the box with a, a 5.8 gigahertz FPV system, which yeah. is cool. But when you're learning to fly, we recommend starting line of sight. Yeah. And part of the reason is, if you can fly a quad line of sight, you can pretty much fly anything, which is really, really cool. And when you do make that jump to FPV, you're gonna have success very, very quickly because it's actually easier in a lot of regards to fly FPV than it is line of sight. One thing that you're gonna notice here when you're learning to fly line of sight, you're gonna learn the disciplines, which is gonna be your yaw, your pitch, your bank, and your throttle management. Oftentimes when you're flying FPV, you're not disciplining yourself because you're just going forward. Yes. You're not monitoring whether you're going up and down while you're going forward. You just know that you're going forward and you can kind of paint yourself into a corner very quickly, especially when you try to level out and maybe your camera has a little bit of tail tangle. Yes. So taking the time to learn this to do this right, it's definitely going to pay you off later. It's going to make you a much better pilot because we all know when you fly FPV, there's times when you got to pull off those goggles and fly line of sight to get your machine back. Typically today, with today's technology, there are normally a few different fundamental flight modes on all quads. Starting off with uh, one of the easiest, which is gonna be like your DJI Phantom experience. And now, we're gonna set that aside because there really isn't a lot of skill involved in flying those. They are a lot of fun, we do love them, um, but you're not gonna get a sensation of flight. Now, these things are using not only auto level and bank angle limits, uh, but they also have GPS. They have downward facing positioning systems, so you could be flying as fast as you possibly can. You let go of the sticks, boom, it stops, it's hold it holds it down altitude yeah. it does it's semi-autonomous so you're actually doing a lot less flying than you actually think it's more like you're pushing a camera around in space basically pushing a so we're gonna take those DJI quads and set them aside for this video because those they, they are pretty yeah. self-explanatory it's very easy to learn how to fly those with no instruction at all um, but when it comes to actual drones yeah. uh, t t traditional quads, drones I don't want to I don't want to put DJI down like I said we love them yeah. um, but the next one in line is auto level 
And that is a flight mode where if you let go of the sticks and say you're banking like this and you're flying, 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 you let go at auto levels, but it doesn't hold its position. It's still gonna drift. If there's wind, it's still gonna be pushed around, but the quad is gonna come to level with the horizon, which is really nice. Yeah, now you still need to manage things like your throttle because it's not gonna altitude lock unless you have a quad with that feature. Yes. Most of them you won't have that. So that means when you drop your throttle, you're gonna drop altitude, things like that. Yes. But auto level is a really great way to start. Four years ago, mm -hmm. we were actually telling people the opposite because back then, the boards did not have the technology, had to program it, and it was very, very finicky. So a lot of auto levels will also have uh, bank angle limits yeah. programmed in. So it basically means if you give it full right stick, and you, it only allows you to go to 10 or 15 degrees. So that's yeah. the farthest you're gonna go. Um, now there are other features like, uh, I believe it's called horizon mode. And what that allows is it's still auto level. If you let go of the stick, it's gonna level automatically. But if you pin the stick full right, it's actually gonna do a full loop. Yeah. which is really cool and it makes it makes you look like a really great pilot because you can just pin the stick and then let go and then boom it comes right back to level and these little vortexes are exceptional with that basically what you'll find is after about 25 percent of the stick deflection the machine knows okay you want to do a flip you want to do something a little yes. bit crazier it'll let you take it beyond so if you pin it all the way it'll continue to roll but also it gives you the ability to push a much more extreme angle and have it come back which yes. is really nice Yes. And then the last mode, which is the most challenging, is going to be acro or manual mode. There's a lot of different terms for this mode. Um, and this is what a lot of the racer guys use. This is what they use on like the DRL. This is what all the mini quad pilots use uh, once they hone their skills in. And basically, it's full manual. It's like a real helicopter. So you bank it a little bit to the left, it's going to hold that position and go that way until you correct for it. Yep. If you put it upside down, it's gonna stay upside down until you bring it back. So every action you need a, a equal or more reaction yeah. um, to fix it. So you're basically always correcting in a constant state of correction. You're gonna basically be controlling every aspect of that plane no matter which attitude it's in at any time. Throttle management, y'all, bank and pitch. Yes, so what do you say, let's, let's put this guy yeah, in the air. Yeah, we're talking a lot, yeah. And now one of the biggest things, you're probably wondering about this huge arrow on my quad. Uh, one of the biggest things when you're flying line of sight, and what line of sight means is when you're flying by just looking at the quad. You're not flying through a camera or anything like that. You're flying by looking at the quad like a traditional model airplane. Um, now one of the biggest things with flying quadcopters is orientation. Now quadcopters do actually have a nose and a tail and a right side and a left side. Um, a lot of times this one's easier than some, um, but a lot of times the quad looks the same from all angles and it's hard to find the front. So when you're flying, keeping that orientation, what side of the quad is the front, which one's the back is critical. So for purposes of this video, we have this huge arrow so I can always show you which way my quad is facing. So let me go get my transmitter and we'll no get this thing powered up. So while he's getting his transmitter, one kind of cool tip that you can do if you want to keep the orientation without putting a big foam arrow, just make the tip of your antenna really, really a bright color. So maybe paint it fluorescent orange or white or indicate it because usually the antennas are always going to be at the back. The cameras are going to be in the front. But if you notice, that's pretty easy to see. That way you'll always know what the back of the quad is. Just paint it a bright color, wrap it in white tape. It'll be a good visual indicator of what you need to keep pointing towards you. So one big thing, if you're new to quads and stuff, anytime you plug it in, you always want to put your transmitter on first, especially if you have things like with Spectrum yep. with auto bind. They'll go into bind sequence if you go too long without seeing a transmitter signal. So always make sure your transmitter's on first. Also, make sure when you plug this in that you put this on a nice level patch of grass. Now one thing, especially if you're new to this and this is your first time flying, make sure you separate yourself about 2x of where you think you're going to need to go. Yes. Also, a really good tool for you is if you have a simulator. Yeah, mm -hmm. Liftoff has a really great simulator. It's only 20 bucks. And the coolest thing about that is you'll be able to actually download and fly many of the models you see today, including this Vortex 150. So when you get ready to take off, you always want to make sure the quad is facing away from you. So we have the arrow pointing that way. Um, one of the things that we learn in paramotoring, and this is actually a good tip in life in general, really before is. you go to do something that you're uncomfortable with or new to, just unwind a little bit. Take a breath. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Um, you got a quad. You've spent hundreds of dollars on it or whatever. It's your first flight. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's really good to do anything you can to relieve those nerves a little bit. So once you feel comfortable, you're going to go ahead and arm. And the key to, especially when you're in grass, the key that I found works really well is you want to just pop that quad off the ground and get it out of a ground effect as fast as possible. So I'm going to pop it up. And the, the number one thing that you want is to keep that nose facing away from you. So as you can see, I have that arrow facing perfectly away from me. And if it starts to drift, kind of like that right now, you're going to use the rudder to bring it back. So. For those of you who are new to quads, uh, you're controlling four axes with your two thumbs, or if you're pinch, four fingers. <laughs> um, but basically on the right stick, and this is talking... Uh, mode two. Yeah, so we're flying mode two. Uh, there's a couple different modes of transmitters all over the world that different people use. Uh, primarily in the United States, people use mode two. And basically what that means, on your right stick here, you have roll, which is right and left. And that's gonna roll it just like an airplane. That's how you do barrel rolls and stuff like that. Forward and backward is 
pitch. That's how you go forward flight and backwards flight with a quadcopter. And then uh, on your left stick, you have yaw, which is left and right. That's how you spin, kind of like moving your head back and forth looking. And then up and down on the left stick is your throttle, so you, you can go up and down. Um, so between all of those, you're going to use all of those different axes to control this quad. Now you're actually in acro mode right now, right? Yeah, for the purpose of, of just showing this video, I'm going to be flying in acro. Um, that's not to say, in our original video, we actually advised that you learn an acro, and we still do recommend that, but it is okay to learn an auto level. Um, it, auto level has come a really long way, and back when we did the original video, auto level was something that you had to program. Um, there's a little bit more know-how involved to have a successful flight in yeah. auto level. Um, but now, uh, so I'm in acro just for the purpose of demonstration, but all of these tips will work just fine in auto level too. So the first thing that you want to really get good at, which is what I've been doing here uh, when you first start flying, is hovering. Take it off, get it out of ground effect. For a little quad like this, you don't need to be more than a couple feet off the ground to get out of ground effect. And just practice on hovering. Yeah. So you can see on my how tiny of little corrections I'm, I'm making on the stick, um, on both left and right sticks to keep it in a hover. But the main thing is you want to always keep that arrow facing yeah. away from you. A really good way to kind of figure out what your sticks do is if you think of your right stick, especially with mode two, uh, if you think of your right stick, if you're on top of a platform, if you lean forward, you go forward. If you lean backwards, you go backwards. If you lean right, you tip light. If you lean left, you tip left. Uh, that's kind of how it is. It's kind of like riding a Segway and stuff. So if you're going forward, you want to lean back. That's the same motion you're supposed to give your stick. Now, if you go to the left side, it's kind of like your accelerator and your steering wheel. So if you give left or right input, you're actually going to be steering like you're steering a car. If you get more throttle, it's like you're pressing down on the accelerator. So just think of more throttle, raising the stick up, you're going up, and dropping the stick down, you're going down. This is definitely different with an airplane when it comes to power, because oftentimes uh, power just indicates speed. It doesn't create lift, the elevator does that. So if you think about it, you're sitting on top of a platform, you're leaning forward, you're going forward, that's similar to how a drone works. So once you get comfortable with hovering, and now all of these steps, take your time on them. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it honestly took me a very long time to learn how to hover. I'm talking dozens and dozens of battery packs of just hovering uh, before I got really comfortable, especially flying an acro. Uh, but once you do get comfortable with uh, hovering, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is a technique that we like to call uh, walking the dog. Yes. This is actually a technique that they used to use in the early helicopter days, way back in the day of flying the big RC helis. Um, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it off and hover it right in front of you, just like normal. But then the nice thing about what you can do is you can start to walk around and move with the quad and kind of always keep yourself positioned behind the quad so you don't have to worry about orientation. So what this is gonna really teach you is how to manage your rudder and how to manage your throttle and your banking yaw, but mostly your rudder. That's one thing that people oftentimes do last. The one thing to keep in mind, especially when you're doing things like walking the dog or you're hovering, is if you ever get in a situation where you're nervous, the best thing to do is to chop the throttle. When in doubt, throttle out. The worst thing you can do is give it more throttle and try to save it. And this goes whether you're six inches from your body or whether you're 60 feet. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel like you're losing control, throttle back. The nice thing about these new quads is they're incredibly durable. There's lots of carbon fiber compared to the old days when we basically had just wooden booms. So as you're learning, if you get in trouble, get something sketchy, you feel like someone's around and there's this unsafe situation, just chop the throttle, let it fall. Many, many times it's going to be just fine. So, and then the cool thing about walking the dog is it's going to really get you comfortable with using pitch, roll, yaw, and your throttle yeah. to maneuver the quad in the position that you want. And if you do get a little bit behind on your thumbs, you can make up for that by just jumping behind the quad a little bit, moving your actual yeah. body to keep that orientation if your thumbs can't keep up fast enough. Yep. All right, so one of the things that I found really helped me after really getting good at hovering and walking the dog is uh, start dabbling with flying nose in, flying towards yourself for the first time. And one of the things that I found worked really well is these S turns. So basically what you do is you take off and you fly the quad away from you, just like you normally do. And then for the first time ever, you turn it around and you bring it to the side of yourself, flying right by yourself, and then boom, now you're flying away from yourself again. The cool thing about this is you're only flying nose in for a split second and you only have to keep it steady for that amount of time and just get it past yourself and then boom, you're flying away from yourself again. And you can keep doing that. I flew this way for almost over a year, I'd say, before I started being comfortable enough to do a full circle pattern. The so same thing. Notice I'm never really flying directly at myself. I'm kind of flying at a diagonal. 
uh, compared to where I'm standing. Josh is flying now. Yeah, so I get the honor of flying now here. So Alex was talking about flying across yourself. But one thing, once you get comfortable flying across yourself that you can start doing is bring that turn in a little bit more towards you and widen up that figure eight. And as you widen up and you get more comfortable, let that nose and attitude come straight towards you and then pass around. Now keep your speed while you're doing this. It's gonna feel a lot more comfortable. And what you're gonna notice is you're gonna be keeping your aileron and your rudder commands kind of parallel to each other. Now as you get more and more comfortable, slow it down as it's going nose in and kind of feel what it's doing and then finish that pattern. That way you have the muscle memory of doing that figure, but you kind of experiment in the middle. And then once you get really comfortable, stop it and then continue on and go again. Now it sounds like we're really tiptoeing around nose and attitude, but the reason is, is most of the time people get in trouble, it's during a nose and attitude flight. One thing you kind of think of, especially if you're flying an acro, is whenever it's banking one way and it's pointing towards you, prop up the table, push the stick towards the low end of the rotors. Now once you get comfortable with that, you can start switching up, do a pattern, fly out a little bit, come back towards you, and practice your left hand and right hand circles. So the reason why we're kind of tiptoeing around flying nose in towards yourself is because once you turn the quad towards yourself and start flying it towards yourself, everything becomes reversed. Right is left and left is right. So it becomes very tricky in your mind uh, to overcome that. And this is a good way to kind of introduce your mind to that concept of flying backwards when you're flying towards yourself. So once you get really good at S turns and then, and then figure eights uh, like Josh was doing, the next big step is to fly full patterns. And that's when you fly out and you do a full circle the whole way around. It takes a little bit of commitment and you are able to fly just like an airplane in a pattern and yeah. you can do a full circle and that's when you really start to get good at flying the quad anywhere you want. Doesn't matter which way the nose is facing. Um, that's when your mind really starts to get comfortable with flying the quadcopter. Now one of the reasons why we always talk about flying a figure eight before flying a full pattern is you want to learn how to do left and right hand turns. Yes. If you find yourself just going straight into a pattern, you're going to find yourself very uncomfortable with one direction or the other. Flying the figure eight first will teach you the discipline, not worry about that as much. Now anytime that you're running out of battery, it's always a good idea to point the nose away from you and then back it into you and then reduce throttle. When you're doing your S turns and your figure eights and even your pattern flying, if you find yourself having trouble with turning the quad and bringing it around, one tip that really helped me is think of your thumbs uh, being connected by a stick and move them in parallel. You're gonna need a little bit of roll and a little bit of yaw in the same direction to have the quad actually do a coordinated turn. Very similar to an airplane. Just like that. All right, so now that we've landed safely, let's recap. Yeah. The first thing you wanna do is hover. Take the thing off and learn how to keep it in place and just hover, balance it on the ball. Um, do that as long as it takes to get really comfortable because to have a successful uh, takeoff yeah. and landing, you're gonna need to know how to hover or you're gonna be crashing at a high speed into the ground. And throughout all this process, especially while you're learning to hover in some of these new techniques, always be prepared to just chop the throttle. Yes. Don't ever try to fight the machine with more power. It's just gonna bring it farther away from you or potentially put you or others in harm. Yes, uh, we always tell people to embrace the crash. Crashing is a big, big part of the hobby, whether you're flying airplanes or drones or whatever it may be, pretty much anything other than DJI quads, you're gonna crash them. It's yeah. almost guaranteed. Um, so when it happens, don't get discouraged. Yes. Pick it back up and try it again. The durability that these quads boast, basically the most you're gonna possibly be at is maybe a set of props. Yes. So always be prepared to throttle down. Yes, once you get good at hovering, the next step is to walk the dog. Yeah. And this is when you're going to really start to get the feel for, for your different control axes. Uh, you're, you're using rudder, pitch, roll to maneuver that quad and keep it always facing away from you. Yep. You're gonna find the more time that you spend hovering, the more every other step is gonna be easier because hovering is really the most difficult thing. It really That's is. where you're really putting fine tunes in and learning how not to over control the machine. Mm -hmm. Once you get good at walking the dog, uh, you're ready to start dabbling in forward flight. And this is when you wanna start doing S turns. You can fly the quad out, kind of bring it uh, diagonal to yourself and fly it past you and so it's facing away from you again and then do the same thing. Keep it going. This is gonna get you comfortable with, uh, starting to get comfortable with nose in, but also just forward flight in general, coordinating your turns. Once you get good at that, then you can try Josh's technique, yeah. which is doing figure eights, which is a little bit more challenging. Yeah, you just, uh, you're going full nose in for a split second. Yeah, there. basically what you're doing is just taking your S turns, you're deepening them out. Instead of being two dimensional, you're making them more three dimensional. But the benefit is you start to get the experience what the quad looks like nose in, but also the inputs you're gonna need. You start telling your brain, hey, look, when I want to go right, I'm probably going to be pushing left because that's the quad's right. Yes, and then once you get good at those, you're ready to try your first pattern, which is definitely going to be 
the most challenging um, because you have to commit for a full circle. Mm -hmm. But once you get it, it clicks and it makes sense and you, yeah. you can do it. You can do kind of any kind of flying that you can think of. You're gonna find if you take it in these orders here, you're gonna actually be having a better and better experience yes. as you go on. If you take the time to hover, not just one pack, but multiple packs. Get it to where you can keep it over a four by four area, mm -hmm. then step on to your next one. Don't worry about rushing through this process because every part of it's gonna be very rewarding. Yes, and uh, if you haven't got a quad yet and you're looking for your first one, yeah. Um, there's there's uh, there's actually a lot of great quads out there that are great for beginners, even if they're not marketed as beginner quads. For example, the 150 that we were flying, it's a great ready to fly quad. Now, determine, to determine what kind of quad you want, you need to determine what kind of experience you're looking to get. We talked about the three different learning curves that it takes to get into flying quadcopters. You have to learn how to build it, you have to learn how to tune it, and then you have to learn how to fly it. Um, for some people, they love building, they love working on the computer, they love tuning. They love the journey. They love the journey, and we do too. Yeah. Um, but th we understand that's not for everybody. So something like a Vortex 150, it comes out of the box ready to go. You get to bypass building and tuning, and you get to get right to the flying. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is where are you going to be flying this thing? Do you have a big backyard? Uh, then go with something like a Vortex 150. If you don't have a yard and you're, you want to try, if it's you know cold where you live or something like that, you want to fly indoors, go with something like an Inductrix or a Tiny Whoop or even a, even a Gremlin. A Gremlin would be really good too. So whatever the journey you want, we're going to put down some links down below that you guys can kind of pick that out. You can see some of the videos we've done in the past, decide what's best for you. And one thing I think we're going to do next here is we're going to talk about your first flights under the FPV goggles. Yes. So we're going to basically do the same concept as this video, except instead of learning how to fly line of sight, we're going to teach you FPV. And I think it's also safe to say that in the future we are going to be doing a complete multi-rotor and FPV beginner series, two separate ones. Uh, we did the airplane one a couple years back and it's helped a lot of people get in the hobby. And uh, the drone space is, is growing quickly and we want to help people have a, a successful journey in that space as well. Now this has motivated you to get into drones, multi-rotors. One thing we're going to put down below is a link to our store. We have yes. a wide variety whether you want to learn to build it, whether you want an immediate solution, but also we're going to be putting beginners packages. If you don't know what you need, you know, whether it's transmitters, goggles, machines, we're going to be able to put down links down below that will help guide you through to pick what's best yes. for you and get you a good experience. Yeah, and our philosophy with our store is we carry products that we believe you guys can have a go out and have a good experience in the hobby with. If it doesn't provide that experience, then we don't carry it on the store. So make sure you check it out. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. We do drone videos, we do airplane videos, we do uh, real general aviation yes. videos. We just got back from Oshkosh. We do about five videos a week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the little bell. It'll let you know every time we come out with a video. Thanks for being part of the family. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Fly.